Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to give you an overview and demo of Power Query and explain how it can help save you a ton of time with your job. So this is the Power Query editor here, but before we dive into that, I want to explain what Power Query is exactly. So Power Query is a data automation tool. It allows us to import data into Excel from external sources. This could be databases, CSV files, Excel files, and even the web. And it has a ton of features that allow us to cleanse and prepare the data. We can also combine and stack data. This is called an append in Power Query or join data sets together, create relationships between them. It's called a merge in Power Query, something you might use something like a VLOOKUP for. Uh, we can also group and summarize data with Power Query, something similar to a pivot table. And Power Query is available on Excel 2010 or later for Windows, and it's also built into Power BI. So it's a tool we can use very, very frequently. If Power Query was a superhero, I like to think of him as Superman because it's someone we can call on all the time to do a ton of different tasks in Excel. However, Power Query has gotten a bad rap. It's gone through a name change, and I also like to think of Power Query as uh, Superman in an ugly Christmas sweater. So sorry to all you Superman fans out there and Chewbacca fans as well, but Power Query has not only gone through a name change, it's also fairly difficult and confusing when you first see it. The user interface is a bit challenging. So today I'm going to help uh, demystify it a bit and hopefully help you learn exactly what Power Query is, the process behind it, and how you can use it in your job. So there's really three steps to Power Query. And the first step is that we're going to, again, get data from almost any data source. This could be Excel, CSV files, any types of databases you can connect directly to with Power Query, and even websites and web sources. We then transform the data with Power Query. And again, this is a tool that's now built into Excel. It's built by Microsoft, and it's part of Excel and Power BI. So we transform the data with the Power Query editor, which was that user interface that I showed at the beginning, and we'll dive more into that. And then we output the data to Excel or the data model. So that's really the three-step process. Now there's kind of a four-step here which makes Power Query magical, and that's that we can automate our entire process by just refreshing the query. And we're going to see an example of that today, and this is where the time savings can really come in and add a ton of value to your job. So let's go ahead and dive in and look at a demo of Power Query. All right, so for this task, we are going to combine a bunch of CSV files with Power Query. So I have this file here that explains the steps we're going to do. And the first thing we're going to do is combine the CSV files. So I have those in a folder here. There's a file for each division. And each of these files contains order data. So each row within this data set here contains uh, data for an order, a specific order for this division. As you can see, there's a lot of rows here. And we want to combine all of these files together or stack them on top of each other. And we're going to use Power Query to automate this process completely. So first thing we're going to do is open Power Query. Now, if you're using Excel 2016 or later, it will be on the Data tab of the ribbon. If you're using Excel 2010 or 2013, you'll install an add-in, and it'll say Power Query right here. I have another uh, article that explains how to do that in more detail, and I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. So here is the Power Query section, again called Get and Transform Data. And we're going to click this dropdown to get data. And as you can see, there's a lot of different places we can get data from. We can get it from files. We can get data from different databases, Azure, uh, online services, other services like the web or other sources. So there's a ton of places we can get data from. For this particular example, we're going to get data from a folder. We're going to combine all the files in that folder. So I chose from folder. That's going to prompt me for the folder path. I'm gonna open Windows Explorer again. I'm just going to click up here in the address bar and you can right click copy or control C, jump back over to Excel and then paste that right here and hit OK. You can also browse from it, uh, from, it from that window if you'd like. And then that's going to just bring up this preview window that shows a list of all those files there in that folder. And down here we have some options. And on the Combine dropdown, we're going to choose Combine and Transform Data. So that'll take a second here to load up and evaluate the query. And then we'll see this uh, Combine Files window. Here's where you can choose some options for the CSV file if needed. 
Power Query is usually pretty good at figuring all this out. So at this point, we'll just hit OK. And that will take a few seconds to load up the Power Query editor. And within the editor here, there's a lot going on. This is a new window that comes up on top of Excel. We have our queries over here on the left side, and this is our data query. Uh, Power Query creates some additional queries here when we do the combine. Won't worry about those right now, but some pretty cool stuff there. So I'm gonna collapse that uh, pane. And here we have a preview of our data. So in the first column, we see the source name of the file. And then we have all the columns of data from these files. And again, these are already stacked on top of each other here. So if we hit the filter drop down here, load more, we can see that we have all the data here for all of our different files. And uh, again, we have a preview here. Over here on the right side in the query settings pane, we have the name of the query and then the applied steps. So Power Query has already applied some steps for us, but as we take some additional steps here, I keep an eye on this pane over here because this will list out the additional steps we take. And then up here at the top, we have a lot of different buttons for different transformations or actions we can take on this data. So the first thing we want to do to clean up our data here is to remove a few columns. Uh, over here on the right side, we have some purchaser information and these columns out here to the right, we don't actually need these for our reporting. So I'm just gonna left click this first column, hold the shift key, left click the last one to select all of those. And then on any column, I'm going to right click it and choose remove columns. The right click menu here, it also has the buttons, a lot of these buttons up here in the toolbar as well. I'm just gonna right click remove now, when I do that, as you'll see, those columns have now been removed. We've also added a step over here to remove columns, but this is not actually removing the columns from the source data, from the CSV files. It's important to know and understand that with Power Query. It's not touching our source data. It's just doing these transformations here in memory in the Power Query editor, and it's going to run those transformations and output new data to Excel or the data model. So we're not actually touching those files which is good to know. We can also remove rows uh, or delete rows, and you do that by filtering in Power Query. So I don't need product 10 in my results. So in the product uh, filter dropdown here for the product column, I'm just gonna uncheck 10 because we do, do not need 10, hit OK, and that'll remove all the rows for product 10. Now, one last transformation we're going to do is clean up this order date column. So if you can see here, these are dates, but Power Query does not recognize these as a date data type. If we go here to the data type, uh, click this menu and try and convert this to a date, you'll see we get some errors here. And we don't want that. Power Query is just not recognizing that format as a date. However, there's a very cool feature in Power Query that allows us to do this transformation uh, very easily. So the first thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm going to delete that step. And any of these steps over here that we can create or that we've created, we can also delete. So I'm just gonna click the red X there to remove or delete that step. And now what I'm gonna do with this column selected, I'm going to go to the add column tab up here. Again, more buttons here with different transformations. And we're going to choose this one column from examples. I'm gonna hit the drop down here and choose from selection. So from the selected column, the order date column. And this is a very magical feature of Power Query. It should be called something better than column from examples because it's a really cool feature that allows us to do data transformations. So here in column one, we can see this windows come up I also get some instructions here, enter sample values to create a new column. So in column one, I'm just gonna double click here in the first cell. And all I'm going to do is type the date uh, like I would normally see it uh, or the date format that Excel would recognize. So this is currently day, month, year. Now I'm in the US, so I'm gonna do uh, month, day, year. So 05 slash 24 slash 2018, I'll hit enter. And then I'll go to the next cell and do the same thing. So it'd be 07 slash 14 slash 2018 and I hit enter again. And once I do that, Power Query has recognized the pattern of the transformation that I'm trying to do, this text transformation. And as you can see here, it fills down all the rest of the dates for me. So it's basically done this transformation. It's also created a formula and you can see that formula right here for this transformation. So this might look similar to an Excel formula. However, it uses a, a formula language called M, the letter M or M code uh, in Power Query. So a different formula language, but it's a functional based language, very similar to Excel. And it's created all of that work for me. So I don't have to do any of this work. 
I'm just going to hit OK here to confirm that change, and then I'll add my new custom column here. Now I can double click in the column header, just quickly rename that to date. And then I can even go now, if I don't need this original date column anymore, I could right click and remove that column. Again, it's not going to affect anything there. The uh, new date column will still uh, show the results here. And that's because Power Query goes in order of the steps that you see here on the right side. And you can also click any of these steps to jump back and see a preview of what the data look like at, the, at that spe uh, specific step. So it's a very cool tool here. And this is our automation, all of these applied steps. So the next thing we're going to do, we're done with our transformations. We're going to go to the Home tab and we're going to click this Close and Load button. This is a split button, and we're just going to click the top half of it here to do a Close and Load. And what that does is it's going to add a new sheet to our workbook, since this is a brand new query, and then output the data in an Excel table. So here is the results of our query in this new sheet. So now let's talk about updating and refreshing the data. And this is really where the power of Power Query comes in with full automation. So we've essentially fully automated this process. And what I mean by that is, we, again, we have this folder with these five files in it. Now let's say we get some new data from a new division, or maybe you get data every week or every month uh, with a new file, and you just want to add it to this existing table. Well, this is extremely easy with Power Query. So I have a folder here with some more data. I'm just going to copy these files here, and then we'll go back over to my uh, data uh, folder, and then we can paste them in there. I'm going to hit Control-V to just paste those two new files in the folder. So we now have two new files for Division 6 and 7. All we need to do to update our query with that data is right-click the table and hit Refresh. Right-click Refresh. That's going to rerun the query and now output this new table with our data. So if we hit the filter drop down here. Oops, sorry, that's off your screen. I'll just go down to the bottom. And you can see we now have data for divisions seven and division six above that. So just a simple refresh will rerun all the steps in our query and output it to this table. So it's important to know that when you do the refresh, Power Query is going to essentially replace all the existing data in the table with the new outputted data from the refresh of the query. So if you were to replace all the files in this folder here or delete some of the files and then refresh, you would only see the data in the table for the files that you have in the folder. But again, the amazing part here is that we fully automated this process in a matter of minutes. And now the instructions for updating this is simply to export your files from whatever system they come from and save them in this folder and then right click refresh your queries. Keyboard shortcut for that is Alt F5. And of course, there's a refresh button up here on the data tab as well. And if you have any pivot tables that use this as their source data, you can refresh those as well. And all of your reports and formula based reports will be updated as well. So the reason I showed a picture of a donut at the beginning is I like to think of Power Query as one of these donut machines. If you've ever been to Krispy Kreme or any other uh, donut shop, you might have seen a machine like this where you just kind of put ingredients in one end and out come these perfect donuts on the other end. And that's exactly what Power Query does as well. It takes our data and not only automates that process, but does it with consistency, which saves us a ton of time and also helps reduce errors. And this can also be used used as an alternative to VBA. It does not by any means replace VBA, but there are tasks you can use Power Query for instead of VBA. And of course, it's packed with a ton of features, but it has its own nuances as well. There's always a lot to learn with every Excel tool, and Power Query is no exception. So within the data analysis process, and this is kind of a three-step process, again, where we get and transform data, use Power Query for that calculate and analyze, maybe pivot tables and formulas, and then visualize and present with charts and dashboards. Where do you think you spend most of your time 
in this process. Yeah, well, if you said number one, you are correct. A uh, recent Forbes article surveyed data analysts and found that 79% of our time is spent just collecting and cleaning up data. So our job really looks like this, or it can look like this, especially if you're doing the data cleanup process manually. So Power Query can save us a ton of time with this step and allows us to then uh, focus on the more exciting things, frees up our time to focus on the more exciting and fun things like calculating and analyzing the data and presenting it, some of the more creative aspects of our job. So Power Query is just one step in the what I call the modern Excel blueprint. We have a ton of tools at our disposal today, and I currently have a free webinar going on that explains all of these tools in more detail. It's called Excel Blueprint. It's a free webinar, and I'll put a link in the description below this video where you can get registered for that and check out this training that goes through all these tools, which will help save you a ton of time with your job and also make you an Excel hero in your organization. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below as well. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.